Right. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, Bristol. Yes, I'm on a never-ending tour, sort of, um, you know, go, following the infinity symbol all over the country. Just been to Scotland and Wales recently, and I'm sure I'll be back there. I love Scotland. Good grief. And I like Wales, but it has a kind of, um, the mountains can feel a bit menacing at times in Wales. I don't know why. Um, hands up who's been arrested in the last year and a half. One, two, three, including me. I'm sorry. Sorry, what? We both work for the BBC. Oh, crikey. Oh, they arrested the wrong institution then, didn't they? What? Just a bit too loud. Okay, should I, should I hold it further away like that? Okay, I'm so used to swallowing. It's my own microphone. It tastes nice. Okay, so um, I'm sorry to tell the other people who've not been arrested. If you haven't been arrested in the last year and a half, I'm afraid you're not leading a full life. <laughs> because the more people who can be arrested for nothing, for no reason whatsoever, the more it sends the police into cognitive dissonance. They're already in cognitive dissonance because they've watched riot police, well, paramilitary, turn up and spoil some Trafalgar Square rallies. And, the, and they're horrified. So the police are horrified by what, they, well, they look like police, but they're not us. Who are they? Okay, so, but if we can get ourselves, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not encouraging to, you to go out and slap a copper. This is not incitement. This is just common sense, you know? So if you do happen to be arrested, your remedy, by the way, is on the card, so you can minimize your chances of being arrested. But the good news is if you are arrested, and assuming you've done nothing wrong, and by the looks of it, I do not see any criminality in this audience. Oh, maybe just a little bit over there. Um, and uh, so you'll be, you'll be entitled to 3,000 pounds an hour of compensation for false imprisonment. And if you're vulnerable, it's a thousand pounds per minute. Yeah, so it's a get rich, it's a bona fide get rich quick scheme. Right, you have to bear with me. This is a new computer. I've no idea where anything is. Okay, let's crack on. And I think this zapper works. So I've got the freedom. I don't know how that white screen. Right, three sections. This is my short talk. Okay, my long talk is three days. So you can imagine how much you know, how difficult it is to cram quite a lot into just an hour. Right, we're going to have a look at something to ponder. And I was listening to um, uh, Ellie. Is it Ellie or Eli? Eli. Eli. Look, listening to Eli and some of the things, points he was making. I'm going to provide living examples of those very points. Very interesting synergy there. So we're going to uh, have three sections. Something to ponder. Two of the great deceptions. And there are so many... Because let's face it, everything you've ever been told is either wrong or a, or a blatant lie. So, but truth is starting to come out now, yes? So we're going to have to blank our minds and, you know, it starts with Father Christmas, doesn't it? Yeah? In our little lives. You know, your parents lie to you, your teachers lie to you, everybody lies to you. Um... Your remedy is the second bit. Right, let's crack on, see if I can do all this in an hour. This is the first time I've done this particular format, so um, I probably need a 10 minute, can someone give me a 10 minute call? And then I can, right. Part one, something to ponder. Okay, I'm gonna ask you some questions, and we won't necessarily answer them now, they'll be answered during the slideshow. Um, number one, were you a live birth or a still birth? Hmm. If you were a live birth, where's your documentary evidence? Because your, uh, your UK government birth certificate says this is not proof of identity. So there's no evidence in your possession that you're alive, apart from the fact that you know you are and you can breathe and speak. But there's nothing on, on paper. Now, in other countries, they do have a live-born certificate. What happens is in this country, you get a uh, so-called Guthrie test, the uh, heel prick, take the baby off, they'd say, it's, oh, we're just gonna run a few checks, uh, administer a vitamin K shot. No, they're not. They're taking DNA, 
for, a, um, for uh, to put on a separate piece of whatever paper the footprint of the baby um, and um, the, the DNA sample and the footprint go to the Vatican and that's the live born certificate. So the Vatican hold your proof of live birth. There are two ways to get this back. You can apply to court and there's another way that one of my students tells me has worked for him but he hasn't sent me the email that reveals all yet. Right? So I can't, you know, I'm hoping that that will happen soon. Uh, number two, who can legally enter your home by force? Because everyone worries, well, it's, it's not nobody, but some people, you know, who are besieged by dark thoughts would say, oh, it's anyone. Anyone who thinks they can, can. You know, anyone with a, with a clipboard. You know, there's only three officers, and we will answer that in one of the slides. Um, so it's very, very restricted, that one. Englishman's home is his castle, no? Okay, well, the law, and I use that term very loosely, um, does uphold that principle quite substantially. Question three, who owns gas, water, and electricity? <coughs> hmm? Yeah, we do. That's right. There's a cosmic triangle. <coughs> Prime creator that some people call God creates the space that some people call planet Earth. Um, the custodian of planet Earth is an entity called Gaia. Gaia is the trustee. So you've got grantor, creator. So we're, we're, we're using trust language now. We're already in law. Prime creator, trustee, Gaia. Holding the space, the sacred space, in trust for. So why are we paying for anything? Why are we working? This is a playpen. This is a, recrea this is a recreational space. What's all the working? Obviously, you, you, you've got skills and gifts and talents that you want to express. But the system is not interested in those unless it can bleed you dry for a profit. It wants you slaving away on the hamster wheel because you think you owe the world a living. No. Do you see what I mean? Everything's upside down. The world owes you a living. Just let that one sink in. So when someone demands something of you, they've got the wrong woman, man, boy or girl. Yes, I'm a... And what do we call the status of someone who is entitled to reap the benefit of something? There's a clue in what I've just said. Beneficiary. We're the beneficiaries of the gift from Prime Creator to Gaia. Yeah? And that's our true status. So all this is coming out now. As Eli said, it's all... This is what apocalypse is. It's revelation of truth unveiling of lies. We can dramatize it. We can talk about Armageddon. And Santos Bonacci would agree with me, I think, when I call this the Holy Land. Yeah? This is where Armageddon is taking place, in your Holy Land. You're sitting in it right now. You're sitting in your Holy Land. This is where Armageddon... So if you're driving the demons, the fears, the anxieties, the traumas out of your system, then you are reclaiming your holy land. If you're complying with government guidelines, then you're allowing the desecration of your holy land. It's that simple. I'm here to simplify. If you go home more confused than you were before I started, I've, I've failed in my task. Yeah? Um, so we own gas, water, and electricity. So why are we paying for it? Just asking the question. Number four, how are, how are obligations created? How are obligations created? Well, they're not really, because there's no such thing. <laughs> and we'll come to that in a slide, show, a slide or two later. Legally, not biologically. Legally, are you a man, woman, or person? Legally, yes, most of you would be persons. You'd be operating the person, and again, we'll look at that. But that can, 
pose more problems than it solves. Yes? Right, here's um, uh, an Australian live born certificate and if you look at the bottom right hand corner it says living or still born living. We don't have the luxury of that in this country. We're, our birth certificate is in effect more like a death certificate. It's not actually a death certificate but it's the birth of a corporate entity known as the person and we'll explain that as we go along. Part two, two of the great deceptions. <coughs> Deception one, the government, the government lies to you about its true status. We don't have government. We haven't had government for a long time. But let's see how this works. The problem is, or was, that governments were bankrupted. They, they, they went corporate when nation states were bankrupted. The, the banksters had, they've got a timeline that's much longer than ours. Ours is about 70, 80, 90 years. The timeline of the cabal is thousands of years. So they're plotting on a longer timeline. So they, take, they say, okay, we'll take gold and silver out of the equation, we'll force um, governments, sovereign governments, to lose their sovereignty, um, come off the land, go onto the sea, the sea of commerce, and become corporatized. Within the word corporate is the word corpse. So you go from a living body, a living entity, which is made up of living souls, you know, the people, the inhabitants, and you uh, create a fictional, fictitious, dead entity. Um, <clears throat> that's what corporatizing is. Gold and silver, which is basically just only exists on paper. So you have to remember there's two worlds. There's the world of PC, prime creator, and there's the world of AI, artificial intelligence. That some people call the beast, some people call Satan, some people call God the demiurge, whatever. It doesn't matter what you call it, as long as we understand that it's a kind of force um, of control and coercion because it's kind of got a chip on its shoulder because it doesn't consider itself, and, it, and it's probably right not to consider itself, part of the divine plan. So it wants, you know they say misery loves company? It wants to drag us down with it, you know? Right, if I'm going down, I'm taking you with me, Yeah? But we're not going, and well, we're going up, aren't we? We're not going down, so we can wave it goodbye. So this whole lesson is all about waving the beast goodbye. That's all it is, that's it. I could sum it up. Ways and means to wave the beast goodbye with a smile on your face. Gold and silver were withdrawn as money. The central banks agreed to fund nations that were prepared to corporatize. Come, you know, step onto the sea, out of... Uh, land which is sacred onto the sea, which is, has its own sacredness, but you know, you can, you know, you've, you don't often drown on land, but you can drown at sea. So the sea has treachery and, you know, storms and what have you. Um, the Republic of the United States of America, that happened to them in the 30s. I think it happened to us, people keep asking me for a date when we incorporated. I haven't got it yet, but I need, so I need to do more. I'm so busy driving around that I can't do my research anymore. Um, so the Republic of the United States became US Inc., that's in incorporated, and the United Kingdom became UK PLC. So Boris Johnson is not a man running a sovereign government. Boris Johnson is an entity known as Boris Johnson Limited, incorporated, therefore, therefore does not exist in our real world. Uh, so if you want to know the, if you want to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, you have to follow the paper trail, find out who the stakeholders are in Boris Johnson Limited, and just keep, you'll find it's probably Gates Foundation and, you know, Alphabet Inc. and Google or God knows what, Chinese Communists, who knows, not interested. I, that's, I, that's where I, I, I get lost in, you know, so I, I keep it more, you know, grassroots. Um, Government is now corporate, but what does this actually mean? You know, how do real men and women get themselves into a state of being allegedly controlled by something that doesn't actually exist? How does that work? Okay, so in 1942, there was a US Supreme Court case that shed some light on how 
govern corporate government actually works. Let's read this out. When private commercial paper is used by corporate government, government loses its sovereignty status and becomes no different than a mere private corporation. So UK PLC has the same status at law as McDonald's and Marks and Spencer's. So if, so if McDonald's, if you got a letter from McDonald's saying that you are required by law to come in three times a week for a Big Mac and fries, wouldn't you feel a little bit, hang on a minute, don't I have a choice? Well, what's the difference between McDonald's and UK PLC? Or, or whatever, what, what county are we in? Is it Gloucester? What's this county? Oh, is it Brit Bristol's a county, is it? Yeah, Bristol County Council, or Bristol Borough of, you know, of local Nazis um, sent you a letter. Because they've gone incorporated as well, you know? You can find their business, Dunst number, you know, their bi business number, corporate registration number. You can just dig a bit and you'll find how Bristol, no, no longer a council, it's a corporation. So they're all in the same boat. Um, so as such, government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern private corporations. In other words, the laws of the sea. In other words, the laws of contract. Hold that word in your head, contract. Laws, and they're not laws, they're rules. The word law is much overused, like when they rock up and, oh, I was in a shop the other day and she said, could you, uh, could you wear a mask please? I said, I don't do that kind of thing. She said, oh, are you exempt? I said, kind of. I, I, I like to play with them. You've got to have fun. You have to have fun, okay? I don't challenge them, and if I do, I just mutter something about the actual law, you know? I say, do you not realize that this is government guidelines and that it's your corporation policy, and yet you're describing it as law? So I just ask a question, and then they tend to go quiet, and then they pretend to be a bit miffed that you haven't obeyed their instruction. And then it just, then it just becomes the world of psychology. It's got nothing to do with law, and it's got nothing to do with health. We're in the realm of psychology. Right, if they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance, now specific performance is a remedy in equity. Technically the word is relief, but it's remedy in equity. Equity is above common law. Equity is where you get your um, <clears throat> true justice, fairness, and conscionability. Common law only knows about what you've signed on a piece of paper. But equity says, well, you signed up for A, B, C, but you only, you only delivered A. So equity says, we're going to compel you to deliver B and C as a matter of um, conscionability. And that order to, to um, fulfill your promise that you've subscribed to is known as an order for specific performance. Now, if you convert that into government language, it's not a contract that you've been asked or ordered or requested to fulfill. It's a law, piece of legislation, that you're obliged, required to follow. But it's legalese doublespeak. It's nonsense. It doesn't, it's all kidology. Those legislative rules and policies are simply offers for you to change your behavior. Yes, that's all they are. As long as you're continuing to live from, the, from a principle that governs us all, and I'll reveal it very shortly, then you are above those policy and rules because they're only offers that you're free to decline. Right. But I'm going to repeat that. There's a screen, a few screens that specifically look at that. If they intend to compel an individual to some specific performance based upon its corporate statutes or corporation rules, then the government, like any private corporation, must prove itself to be the holder in due course of a contract or commercial agreement. So no contract, no obligation, no deal. You know, Noel Edmonds was giving us clues, deal or no deal. No deal, no. Righto. You are at cause in everything that happens in your life. You get the final say at all moments. There are no victims. There's just poor me ego. 
But this transition into a new paradigm is moving us away from poor me ego into the higher self expression of divinity. It sounds very grand and dramatic. All it means is we're waking up. Because we've all been asleep. Um, between it, so co contract or commercial agreement between it and the one upon whom demands for specific performance are made. So remember, you're not being obliged or coerced, except in your mind, by law. You are being requested to accept an offer to contract. End of. But we're going to explore these in more detail. We are therefore governed and policed by consent or contract. Who said that when she was Prime Minister? There's a clue. Theresa May. If, if it was any other way, if we were not, if we were, if whatever the government said we had to do, that would already be, tyranny would already be here. Yes? So there has to be some bridge that they have to cross to get us into some kind of relationship. Corporate government does not make law, it makes policy. They are politicians, politicians. And they, are, and they use corporate government policy, policy, P-O-L-I-C-E, corporate policy, sorry, corporate government policy enforcement agents that we refer to as police officers to enforce their policies. Law doesn't enter into it. There's no, um, there's no law in their legal system. Virtually, or so, there's hardly any. There's very little health care in the NHS. Tiny little bit. Yeah? It's been systematically removed while we were asleep. Which also means that there is no such thing as legal obligation. Well, I'm re repeating myself. It's, it pays to repeat because that's how we learn. Once we get past the age of seven, we, we need to repeat things. <clears throat> okay, second deception. It all starts with the certificate of birth. So... We weren't given our certificate of live birth. We were given a certificate of entry into the corporate world. Now, I don't call it a fraud. A lot of so-called common law practitioners, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm common law savvy, but I'm not a common law practitioner. And if I am, it's just on the streets. Once you get past your own front door, common law ceases to serve you, unless someone is trespassing but assuming that's not the case. And then you're in the realm of trust, equity, and GDPR privacy. So once you're on your computer, if you're talking common law, you, 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 they won't hear you. They won't listen. They're not interested. Because according to their thinking, their statutes have consumed common law, gobbled it up, and taken it from the land onto the sea. Yes? But on the streets where you're clearly living, they can see a, a living wo woman or man, you can assert some common law rights. They're actually much higher than common law, and I'm going to come to that. Um, because it's not paperwork. The minute you're in computers and paperwork, forget common law. Because common law dates back to, it's pre-paperwork, isn't it? Thousands of years before paperwork. Gold and silver were withdrawn as money and replaced by trust funds. So there's no money, so you can't pay for anything, even if you wanted to. You've never paid for anything. You're not old enough to have paid for anything. You'd have to be about 120, and then you paid with gold and silver. So we've never paid for anything. Let that one sink in. Truth bombs, you know, dropping like confetti. You've never paid for anything. Just let, just let that sink in. You've promised to pay. And you've shifted some digits around, but that's not paying. That's just balancing credit and debits. It's not paying. Um, 
So it was all about trust funds. The banksters, and that's what they are, because they are criminals. They're the mob. The mob has various tentacles. It has the banks. Not, I'm not talking about the, the mafia now. Way, the mafia, like, so that's kindergarten stuff. We're talking about the true mob, you know, that run the banks, uh, the governments, the councils, and now the hospitals. That's the mob. The banksters need collateral to fund the newly incorporated US Inc. and UK PLC. The collateral offered were life insurance policies taken out on our lives. So now you know why the Vatican needed that live born certificate because it created evidence of life that could be insured, an insurable event. We are the beneficiaries, there you go. There's your first status correction. There's a lot of fuss and faff about status correction. But the true status correction, because we are multidimensional divine beings, happens in the Holy Land, inside of you. When you wake up to who you really are, and Eli gave you some great clues, and Santos Bonacci does as well. Santos Bonacci is one of my great influencers, you know. Jordan Maxwell, Santos Bonacci, and Mark Passio, the former satanic priest, are my three, I would say, pretty much my three main influences. I would, can't think of anyone more influential. Uh, certainly not my mum. Actually, no, she has, yeah. I think my mum has, yeah, she's quite independent-minded, yeah, in her own way, yeah, so. There you go. There's the, the top four. Right. Um, oh, hang on, I've got to go. Uh, we're the beneficiaries of these secret trust funds, but nobody tells us, Okay. It's not what they tell you, which is normally wrong or a lie. It's what they don't tell you. It's not what we don't know. It's what we don't know that we don't know. Because we all went to school and there's no knowledge available, no true knowledge, and certainly no wisdom. Good grief. I, I researched knowledge and wisdom in schools for years to write my book. Couldn't find anything. Nothing. The trust fund in our name is evidenced by our birth certificate. So that's all about trust funds and collateral. That's your birth certificate. That's your government birth certificate. Okay? That's not real. That's for their world. Our life is evidenced by our live born certificate held by the Vatican. And you can get a certified true copy through court or through this other procedure that I don't quite know yet, but we'll... So we'll move swiftly over that one. An overriding principle of creation is whatever I create, I own. This is another big one, another big truth bomb. It has, I'm sure you kind of knew this, but it has massive implications, massive. So whatever I create, I own. Remember that, we'll hold on to that thought as well. I know you're going to have a lot of thoughts to hold on to, so you might need to strap yourself in to, uh, to, your, to your seats. Right. Birth certification creates the person. Birth certification is paperwork done by a government agent, the regist registry of births and deaths, etc. So birth certification creates the person, and under the overriding universal principle, the per person is therefore owned and controlled by the state via its certificating authority. Is everyone following my logic? Is, is, is anyone not following the logic? Do, yeah, just let me try. Yeah, I'll take that. Well, there was a kind of a silence for both questions. You got me confused now. <laughs> right, is everyone following this logic? That'll do. But what exactly is the person? Notice I didn't say who, I said what. It's not a who, it's a what. It's a thing. The person is, well, it's not even a thing because it doesn't exist. Things exist. You can build something. That exists. You know, it's your creation. The person is the combination of the given names and the family surname. So, mum or dad or caregiver, when you're born, decide that it's their duty, and that's an assumption because, as we know, there's no legal obligation, which I'm going to go into in more depth soon. 
they fill in this application for a certificate of registration of birth. In that process, the names are put together to create the name of the person, the legal person, the legal fiction person. It's legal because that's the protocol. It's fiction because it doesn't, it doesn't really exist, just a figment of our imagination. The person is a legal fictional character and figment of our imagination. It does not really exist. Okay, I was ahead of myself there, wasn't I? It has been described as an energy or entity attachment. There's another truth bomb. It's been described as an energy or entity attachment, a form of possession. So if you never release yourself, now a lot of practitioners say, get rid of your, claim your birth certificate, um, own your legal name, you don't need to do any of that, you just need to be conscious of what it means. As long as you know that you're not the person, again we'll come to that, then you're already winning, you're winning. Um, so people who've never become conscious that they're not the person can have their lives. I mean, uh, a, a random sort of example would be um, subconsciously, uh, Elton John knew that Reg Dwight wouldn't get him anywhere. And, and Harry Webb knew that Cliff Richard would get him, for, you see what I mean? So they, that was their way of owning their lives, creating a whole new name. Whatever I create, I own. So they, own, they, they genuinely do own that new name. However, the bad news is it would be linked to the old name via the national insurance number. But apparently they don't keep tabs on new names. They don't have the infrastructure. So it's, this is a bit of a gray area, to be honest. Um, Having created the legal fiction person, all they need to do now is convince you that either A, it is you, or B, it is yours. How's, how do they do that? How do they convince you that you are the legal person or that the legal name is yours? Which is what 99.8 or 9% 9 of the population would say. Yeah, that's me, that's mine. That's where people are trapping themselves in the matrix. Uh, how is it done? All right, I won't, because I'm pressed for time, I won't tease you. By registration at school. So you register the person's name, and at that point it's a child at school, which is a surrender of authority. But by this slide is not necessarily referring to that. It's referring to the 10 to 15 year process of entrainment. You know, imagine you're my class and I've known you for years. I don't need to recite your names to check. Uh, ben Smith, here. Yeah. Well, I can just look up and see that Ben Smith is sitting there. I don't need to recite the name Ben Smith. But what I'm doing, and obviously teachers won't be aware of this, I'm getting the boy known as Ben to become the person by the title Mr. Ben Smith. Yes, very cunning, very clever. So, 10 years, and this was not included in the book, School No Place for Children, because this consciousness only occurred to me after I wrote the book, you know? So, I'm going to have to write a second book in chapter one. This will feature, <laughs> you know, about how schooling and law interplay, interact. So, the schooling process is really quite a sinister process on many, many levels. It's given us all, I have to throw this in because I have liked schooling, education, Tourette's. The minute I, I mention the word schooling or education, I have to say something about it, right? Normally something very pejorative. So it's given us all complex PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, and that's all part of the entity attachment, and it's complex because we don't know we've got it. We will have been diminished in some way by our schooling. Either our gifts and talents weren't recognized, that's the best case scenario, or we came away feeling completely belittled, humiliated, short of confidence, no public speaking skills, no life skills, or very little, you know, di dissected, you know? fragmented, 
Soul fragmentation is actually one of the purposes of schooling. One of the purposes. So this entrainment or indoctrination works beautifully. So by the time you leave school, you're utterly convinced. Well, you, you answer to the name of the person. Yeah? And this is the effect. This is a very short list. The, the list is much longer. I do run a privacy course, privacy and natural universal rights course, online, live on Zoom. And we take all this and more much further over five weeks. So fictional is the person, the parent, the child, the doctor. See, the doctor can maim or kill you with impunity as long as they stick to government protocol. Um, office, ditto officer, they can arrest you, beat you up. If you've stepped into the person's shoes, you're government property. They're not beating up a man or a woman. They're beating up government property. But if the man or the woman can show that there was no justification to do anything to the man or woman, then as a man or woman, you'll get compensation. But there'll be no comeback for the police officer. Yeah? Just as there's no comeback for the doctor that kills you or maims you, as long as they're complying with protocol. So the crime that they commit is deviation from protocol. So a doctor that starts talking naturopathy and herbalism will get struck off, you know? Uh, and a teacher that starts talking self-centered, personally empowered, um, inspired creative education will also get struck off. <clears throat> um, so you don't want a doctor, well, you don't want to be a parent. If you're talking to a school as a parent, proudly saying, as a parent of my child, whatever, then you're Falling into government hands, you're, uh, uh, you're taking the position of person, the lowest rank, and you're dealing with an officer, the head teacher or deputy. So they can't hear you. They can ignore you with impunity. So if you say, don't jab, next week, they'll jab. They'll obviously come up with an excuse. Oh, the nurses came in and we just had a quick campaign, you know. And all the other children lined up. So your child just thought, well, I don't want to be left out, and what can we do? You know, they're over 12, they've got uh, Gillick competence. Yeah, there you go, what can you do? Yeah? So if you, don't, if you wish to avoid that nightmare scenario, there's only one option, and it's the obvious one. <laughs> Pull, deregister. Um, and more about that in the, sec in the last bit. So, you don't want a doctor, you need a physician if you're poorly. You don't want to call a policeman officer because you will be instantly subordinating yourself to them. Yes? And you don't want to refer to yourself as I because they will presume that I refers to the person. You want to refer you to, uh, to yourself as we, the man and the person, the woman and the person. That's two entities, one real one fictional. I'm only giving, this is only a teaser talk, so, you know, some of this may confuse you, but there's videos to watch, there's a much longer talk being filmed next week in Kings Landley, um, Hertfordshire, so if there's anything today that I say that, that gives you more questions than answers, just watch the full version, yeah, and because it's a video on YouTube and on my uh, website, watch it again and again and again and again and again. Uh, yeah, you, we don't want teachers, change the word around, teach, T, shift it with CH, you got cheater. Cheaters, they're cheating children out of precious life. What's the difference between a prison cell and a classroom? They've got the same number of walls. They've got the same, very similar rules. Keep quiet, speak when you're spoken to. You know, you've got certain movements that you can make. You've got to sit in a certain place. You've got to non-stop. Your, your time is micromanaged. It's that micromanagement early on in life that is driving most people do lally. You rock up at your friend's house Thursday afternoon randomly, and they freak out. Hang on, you're not in my diary. Oh, what's going on? Someone died. No. 
just fancied a game of cards or a cup of tea and a ketchup. Spontaneously. Oh, do I need to apologize for spontaneity? I, I ran a teens group recently, because this is, this is where I'm heading, because I'm going, I'm going back towards, as this message gets out wider and wider, I can go back towards education. I won't, obviously, I'm not going to leave law stranded, but I'm going to head towards, because I've got to get the, the boys and girls on board, because they're the future. So I said to this group, it's supposed to be teens, typical festival um, thing, you know, they started streaming in, I thought, that's four years of old, that's six, that's five, that's seven, that's eight. Where's the teens? Right? Eventually there were a few teens, so it's a completely mixed age range. So I had no idea how to pitch it. So at one point I found myself saying, does anyone know the word spontaneous? Most of them were school educated, school, you know, at mainstream schools, which was another shock to me, because I thought being a Freedom Festival, they'd all be, you know, happy dippy home educated, you know? Yeah, so a huge learning curve when you deal with anyone that you haven't met before. <clears throat> anyway, so, uh, no one, spontaneous. And I said, okay, how about propaganda? Now, fair enough, if you're under seven, it may be even under 10. You won't necessarily have any reason to know that word, but there was plenty of them that were over 10. There was 12s, 13s, 15s, 17s. Can you see what's going on in schools? The language that they don't want children to actually live or, or breathe or comprehend is being extracted. Yeah? So if, the, if there isn't a word called propaganda, then whatever the government says must be truth. It can't be propaganda. Whatever the BBC says must be pure truth. It can't be propaganda. Why can't it be propaganda? Because there's no such word. If you're an employee, again, you're operating the legal person, you're in the public, you're on the ship, you're on the sea of commerce, and you are being dictated to by the terms and conditions. Again, you've contracted to be an employee, so they've trapped you by contract. It's the only way they can do it. But the employee is not leading a full life because they're not, they're being micromanaged. I'm completely unemployable. I had three years in my 20s as an employee. Oh my God. Um, fortunately, the last year with a hippie doody East End of London uh, couple of solicitors that were like pot smokers from the 60s. They were fantastic. But, 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 but my two years as an employee, when I was like early 20s, like, you know, it was like everything, began, I was, it was a living nightmare. So as soon as I could become self-defining, even if that meant being a courier delivery driver for a few years, happy as Larry, you know, totally had a smile on my face. I'd go into depots in the morning and say, um, someone dragged me over to the corner and said, um, David, whatever you're on, I want some. <laughs> life, life, mate. Freedom. Right. Um, so you don't want to be an employee. You want to be an active man or woman. Demonstrating benevolence, showing service, doing service to mankind, service to others. This is, again, the new paradigm. Their paradigm is service to self. We only ever... And that was, the, again, the schooling indoctrination. You've got to work hard to get your grades up. And if you try to help anyone with their grades and their, their um, results, what, what do they call it? Cheating. They are cheater. Another way to, re to, to get clarity on this is police officers, civil servants, teachers, doctors, politicians, you have to regard them all as government agents. Now, some of them are very, very, very nice people. Some of them may be you. Some of them may be your husband or wife, mother, father, child, boy or girl. It, but they're operating without full consciousness. That's all. <clears throat> uh, the constable, by the way, is your friend there to serve you. And we'll come to that in a minute. In fact, it's on the white card. Uh, hopefully, I'll have time to go very briefly through the white card. Uh, but the officer is a very dangerous animal. And the white card will help you deal with officers. The constable is, if they haven't, if you haven't called the constable, if you can get them to admit that they're there as a peace constable, then you can dismiss them. We do not recall summoning you. 
So you establish that they're a constable. We do not recall summoning you. You're therefore dismissed and free to go. That works. It works. Right, moving on. So, back to legal person. You are not a legal person. You cannot possibly be the legal person as it was created weeks after you were born. So you were born and then the paperwork happened in which the government creates the legal person. Does that help clarify it? That's it. Nor is the legal person's name yours. From the overriding principle of? Why is the legal person's name not yours either? What's the overriding universal principle? Whatever I create, I... Did you create that name? Right, you were two weeks old. How could you have created it? So you can't own it. Is your name Mr. Bill Smith? Yes, it is. That's fraud on behalf of Mr. Bill Smith. He's pretending to be a piece of paper. He's pretending to be the title on a trust. Um, and he's also pretending to own something that he doesn't own. That's misrepresentation. So they're punishing you for, for breaking their rules. That's fraud, that. They don't say that's fraud, that. They just say, thank you, you can come with me now. And you're taking up the position of person, which is property of the corporate state. And what happens next is any, anyone's guess. You may not be the legal person. You may not own the legal person's name, but you have the right to use it. This is where the hardcore common law practitioners are going a bit doolally. You can use it when it suits because it's the name of the beneficiary from the trust funds that was collateral for the newly formed corporate governments. So you can use it. That's how you get free dental care and free hospital care and other benefits. Um, what's it called? PIP now, personal independence payments. PIPs, you know? It's your funding. You're just accessing, they need your signature, yeah? They're not giving you anything that isn't yours. <clears throat> Nor is the legal person's address yours either, but again, you have the right to use it. Your postcode is your military post. So if you don't want to be an enemy combatant, enemy of the state, you put square brackets around your postcode. Another truth bomb, eh? If you don't want to be treated as an enemy combatant uh, with a military posting, you put square brackets around your postcode and you put care of C oblique O before the address. These are little tips, tricks and hacks that you learn on my privacy course. How does the corporation control the man, woman, boy, girl? By inducing the man, woman, boy, girl into a contract via the legal person. A contract can only be established between contracting parties of equal status or capacity. If you've ever studied contract 10, okay. If you've ever studied contract law, I might, you might find me speaking faster and faster. I'm gonna sound like, I'm gonna, if, if I sound like a chipmunk in the next few minutes, right? Um, so, contracts can only be entered into by people of equal, <laughs> equal standing. So you can't have, the corporation and the person are both equally dead, artificial, fictional, and two-dimensional. Okay? I'm going to scream through some of these because I want to get to the last section. But the man, woman, boy, girl are alive, living, breathing souls. So you can't have a contract. So a legal trick is needed. In fact, there are two. One is called joinder, one is called silent acquiescence. Joinder, what's joinder? It's creating a contract, it's an implied contract, because you haven't signed anything, by duping the man, woman, boy or girl into actively accepting the position of person. So it's a kind of deception. How does it work? Well, there's three types of joinder. One is verbal. If you answer a question, just like you did at school, everything comes back to schooling. If you answer a question, you're giving joinder. You are taking up the position of person. You're accepting a higher authority over the person. 
stepping into the person's shoes. So do you understand is one of the questions that the police ask. If you say yes, you're a person that's going to be arrested or charged with something. That's, that's verbal joinder, non-verbal joinder, by complying with a request. Would you step out of the car, please? Don't step out of the car. Because if your teacher asked you to do something, you did it. So you've got to say, no, 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 no. This is not a teacher. This is just a silly little boy or girl in a daft pantomime costume. You have to redefine everything. Yeah, that's... I could tell you so many stories about pantomimes, you know? Third type of joinder. So you've got verbal, non-verbal, you've got remote. This shocks a lot of people. Opening mail addressed to the legal fiction person gives joinder. So you've got to play catch-up after that. Yes? You can catch up by learning the art of responding with conditional acceptance, data subject access request, another feature of the privacy course. But there's a much quicker remedy, which we'll come to in the last section. So um, it's also mail, it's also a postal offence to open mail addressed to your legal person. Section 84, Postal Services Act 2000. It's an offence for a person to tamper with or open mail or post addressed to another person. And windowed envelopes are mail fraud. And I don't have time to go into that. So watch out for the videos or do the course. Silent acquiescence, a maxim of Roman civil law, given an opportunity to refute, reject, or deny, but instead of remaining silent, you are deemed to accept it. Oh, there's an E missing in deemed. Right, okay. Deemed. Well, we've spelt that phonetically, haven't we? Yeah? Postal communication, anything they send us by post is an offer to contract. Universal postal law allows 72-hour cooling period, period of grace, to make up your mind and serve either notice of rejection or offer declined. We, if we sit on mail, which is mail fraud most of the time anyway, it's fraud because it's, you can see the name of the legal person through the envelope. So that's not you. If it's addressed properly, it's got to be on the front of the envelope with a postage stamp, which is evidence of contractual value. So there's no value. Franking is not value. It's got to be a postage stamp. Puts it in universal postal jurisdiction. <coughs> um, the principle of silent acquiescence kicks in. We are deemed, oh, they are. These come back to accept an offer addressed to the legal fiction. So people who've been their mail can get into a bit of bother because you're deemed to accept whatever was inside it. So you need to send it back. Offers to contract with the legal fiction include bills, notices, summonses. There's, the list is much longer. Let's translate very quickly. You are required by law. You is, we weren't taught English grammar, again, schooling. You is plural. I can refer to this collective as you, but you can only refer to me as thou, because I'm singular. Uh, so you, some random collective of individuals that we haven't identified, so we cannot contract with, are required, look at Bouvier's online law dictionary or Black's fifth edition law dictionary, required means requested. Because it can't mean obliged because you haven't signed anything yet, you haven't contracted yet. By law, by law means law of contract. So let's translate. Some random group of individuals that we don't know how to identify is requested by the law of contract. So we're making you an offer. It is the law, it is the law of contract. Well, it is the principle of contract, or it is the rule of contract. Okay, fast final section, your remedy. I've identified four remedies for systemic narcissism. One, do not contract, do not contact. If it's, an indiv if it's a human narcissist, no contact. Pull away. Pull the boy or girl from school, from, away from the systemic narcissist. Uh, pull yourself away from your personal narcissist. I'm not saying it's easy, but that's what we have to do. Uh, do not contract. Number two, remain above their rules and policies. Uh, we'll go through these in a minute. You, uh, three, use the power of the question. Four, go private. Okay. No contact within 72 hours. Return to sender. And I'll go through what you put on the envelope in a minute. Outside of 72 hours, then you need to be a little bit more diligent. Conditional acceptance, 
combined with data subject access request. We go through that in detail on the course. Remedy number two, remain above their rules or policies by obeying the one and only true law, which is, dun, dun, drum roll please, be armless. Etched into the fabric of the universe is the principle of harmlessness. Certainly for divine beings, harmlessness. And in particular, self-harmlessness. So when someone asks me to put a mask on, I just say, I'm, I'm, I'm obeying the law. If they want to know what law I'm obeying, that's the one. I'm being self-harmless. Yes? It's the highest law there is. There's no higher law. The rest is just psychology. Remaining harmless or self-harmless means no one is above you at law and you retain your innate mastery. How do you become a master? By being born. It's all you have to do. That's all the proof the universe needs that you're a master. Which is why one master went into court and for a speeding offense, they said, can we have your name, please? Yes, I am Master Lu, because he was a martial arts teacher. Master Lu, oh, case dismissed. We can't deal with masters here. Thank you, off you, bye-bye. In fact, they are above, below you as government or corporate agent. So you're either their master, because I'm in the South kind of now, so in Manchester, it's master or master. You're their master or their customer, if it's a corporate agent. So what do they say about the customer? Always right. So master is the law, and the customer's always right. But remember the other true status that they had from us, what was that? Under the trust, the, um, both the Cosmic Trust and the Birth Certificate Trust Fund beneficiary. So we have three new statuses. So whereas most people live life as the person which is the corporate government slave, in effect. Slave is too strong a word, but not that strong. Serf, bonded serf. Master is law. Customer, always right. Beneficiary is the value, because you, they insured, they created the trust funds based on the value of your life, and the beneficiary never pays. That's your new status going into this <coughs> shift, dimensional shift. It's transitional, because one day you'll just wake up and you'll just be a man, a woman, a boy or a girl. And you won't need to think about this, yeah? So where is the obligation to do any of the following? Answer questions, take tests, take an injection, wear a mask. These are all voluntary choices. We're, we're in the realm of psychology. Fill out a form. I haven't got time, but I've got a great little anecdote about the HMRC, just saw them off with it. I've gone private, bye-bye. That was seven years ago. They canceled all the penalties. You know, you're the boss. They're servants. Yes, they're your servants, they're your agents. And if they're corporate, they are your service provider and you're the customer. You can't be wrong. Keep a social distance, stay at home, close your business, pay taxes and fines. Taxation is contractual. Just let that truth bomb sink in. Don't have time to go into it. Remember, no signature means no express contract. No joinder means no implied contract. Okay? And also remember, no contract means no obligation. Where is the obligation to even insist police with inquiries? Bryce versus Conley, there's case law on it. Enforcement, just a reminder, is just like the legal fiction person, works on your mind. F meant. Enforce anything ending in meant payment. Payment is not a real payment. It's a payment that you th is in the mind. Meant, yeah, fictional payment. From the Latin mente, meaning mind, and from the French mentir, meaning to lie. So it's a figment of our collective imagination. Here's the answer to the original question. Only three officers can force entry in civil matters, and they must always have a warrant. So nobody without a warrant in civil matters. If they've got, uh, they are, writ of repossession, high court, that's uh, bank, warrant for repossession, landlord and tenant, tenants defaulted, warrant for gas leak. Forget about prepayment meters, there's no such thing as warrant to enter to fit a prepayment meter. That's fraud. Proved it in my own skin. 
Remedy at law, use the power of the question. Verbally, orally, answer a question with a question. So again, uh, where are you going? What's your name? What are you doing here? Am I obliged to answer that question? Constable, not officer. In writing, use conditional acceptance or de and data subject access request. Here we go, last section now. Remedy at law, go private. Here's what you put on the letter. Well, I should have it written out. Um, this is you're protecting your holy land from these ma malevolent communications. So you have in blue ink, two lines crossed through the envelope uh, on the front. So you're cancelling it. You're, that's the instruction to the post office that you, you don't want this envelope back. Two lines, 45 degree angle in blue ink, bottom left to top right. And you write on it, returned for cause, and the cause is that it's mail fraud. Double mail fraud, no postage stamp, and addressed to a legal fiction person that is not you. Without dishonor, without dishonor, because you're doing it within 72 hours. In commerce, no lawful consent, no legal contract, offer to contract, declined. Um, I've got to dash through. If you don't get, get this written down, there's videos about it. So um, protect your home with a private by appointment only notice. So if you pull your boy or girl or grandchild out of school, tell your daughter or son, uh, put privacy notice up, private by appointment only, keeps all the government agents at bay. And if they phone or email, apply GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, more detail on the course. So we had some, a, vi a visitor the other day where I'm staying in Salford, and she took one look, she had dark glasses, very sinister, took one look at that sign, turned around and left. Because if they do knock on, you can do business. Uh, do you have an appointment? No, do you not see that sign? Oh, that one. Uh, do you have an appointment? No. Would you like one? Well, yeah. Well, that'll be £25,000 payable via PayPal in advance. <laughs> you're doing, everyone laughs. It's not funny. Well, uh, kind of funny, but it's, you're doing business. So they want two grand off you, but to get two grand off you, they've got to give you 25 grand for the appointment. So you're going to make 23 grand. You won't see them again because they, they're not that stupid. They know that it's not good business. Protect your business, PMAs, private members associations. If we, know that, if we have another hardcore tier four or five, you've got to carry on doing what you're doing. This is humanity's chance to say Pfft, to the policies, right? This is very important. Forget your fear. Your fear is just a test. It's a test of integrity, yeah? Right, the higher the integrity, the, the lower the effect of the fear. You're gonna get the fear and the anxiety, that's a given, but it's what you do with it. Okay, so the higher the integrity, the lower or the smaller the effect that the fear and anxiety will have on you because you know that you can't sell out. You're gonna, you don't want to sell your soul. You don't want to let the boys and girls down and the men and women. Humanity, we're in this together. So you close the door if it's a shop. Close the door, put private members only up and only allow people in with an appointment or who are clearly have benevolent intent. Anyone with a uniform or a clipboard door remains closed and they can do what they want but they've got no authority because you've denied it them by going private they're in the public you can declare a trust over specific assets okay vehicle in particular so that you're if you're a dissident you're the user not the owner they can only confiscate from the owner but your trustee is the owner you're just the user so huh yeah how cool is that right finishing now there's a book on sale, 15 pounds. We've got some copies on there. School No Place for Children. If you want to do the course, you'll find the website details on the privacy card, the protection card. It's the white card. Don't have time to go through it in detail, but you'll see some nice strategies for minimizing the risk of arrest. And also on the other side, there's the, a full list of all the crimes that, that, let's say, overzealous police officers commit or Enforcement agents, may not necessarily be police officers. Uh, www.thepeopleslawyeruk.com. Subscribe, please, and you'll get emails telling you when the next courses start. Got one on Wednesday the 6th of October, one on Monday the 18th of October. Um, and uh, I think that'll do for me for now. Thank you very much.